D, wait for it. Light bulb. I got the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? And welcome to my Week in Review, where I come to you every Sunday with three entertainment stories that I personally find interesting, and then we discuss them down below. Now, also down below, you can find the articles that I read to bring you this video, and you can read those and, you know, you know, do whatever you want with that, or just listen to this video where I break it down for you, and then you can uh, comment down below. Now, before I get started, I want to say two more things. The first one is that if you like what I do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel. YouTube is always changing up their algorithm and small channels like mine always get pushed to the back of the line. They're also doing a old account cleanse and a bot purge. So, you know, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, collateral damage always because of that. Um, and I uh, please ask that you like, share and subscribe. And I thank you in advance. Um, I also just want to tell you that I am selling merch now, so go ahead and take to check this out. Geek What is now a clothing brand that designs unique streetwear with a geek slash nerd attitude. Some of the core values of Geek What is to see the geekdom for how amazing it is, which is something I've always encouraged on this channel. Here's a look at my latest shirt that was designed by artist Patrick Walters, with my favorite design being me as a cartoon. So if you like what you see, go ahead and click on the link in the description down below. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. All right. So if you guys head over there, maybe buy something really helps me out and I appreciate it. All right. So why don't we go ahead and get started on these three stories? Okay. So for my first story, Babylon 5 is getting a reboot and it is in development at the CW. Um, creator J. Michael uh, Strazwinski. Stray Swinsky, I don't know how you say it. The original uh, creator of the show is set to write. Um, now, this will be produced by Warner Brothers. And it says that is this is a new iteration of the sci-fi series and is described as a from-the-ground-up reboot. Now, the series, John Sheridan, an Earth Force officer with a mysterious background, is assigned to Babylon 5, a five-mile-long space station in neutral space, a port of call for travelers, smugglers, corporate explorers, and alien diplomats. In a time of uneasy peace and the constant threat of war, his arrival triggers a destiny beyond anything he could have ever imagined and an extraordinary earth company accidentally triggers a conflict with a civilization a million years ahead of us putting sheridan and the rest of the b5 crew in the line of fire as the last best hope for survival of the human race um <clears throat> Now, as of as of recording this video, none of the original cast has signed on to do this show. And like I said before, uh, Strace Swidsky, Strance Swidsky, <laughs> I don't know if that's how you say his name. Anyways, uh, he is set to write and he's also written on a bunch of other stuff, including the movie Changeling with Angelina Jolie, Ninja Assassin, uh, Thor, the first one, um, and then World War Z. He has also written uh comic books for Marvel and DC comics. And I just have to tell you guys right now, this show lasted five seasons. It's got like 110 episodes, I believe. Um, and I love this show. I think it's so good. If you have not seen the show, granted, the visual effects don't hold up, but it's still good. I love this show so much. It was when I, I watched it, uh, you know, uh, it was, it came out before I was in high school. So I don't really remember exactly when it came out, but when it came out, I loved it. I didn't catch it right off the bat when it came out. I think I caught on, um, maybe around season two, I believe two or three. I can't remember off the top of my head, but man, I loved it. I loved the show. It was so good. I love the aliens. I loved uh, the Mambari are my favorite. Um, but I loved, uh, you know, I loved the war that's going on. And I loved, you know, all the diplomatic stuff that went on in the station. It was a really good show. It was so good. It was very sci-fi. I loved it. As far as shows goes, it still holds up. The, the, the CGI might not be the best, but I mean, they did what they could and, but, I still love it. You know, they was they use they kept using a lot of of shots that you know over and over again. But I was fine with it. You know, uh, and now I'm fine with it. It's still so good. So that's my first story of this week. So for my second story of this week, it looks like Disney and Scarlett Johansson have settled their lawsuit. Um, now the news came uh, later on in the week. I believe it came on Friday. Um, now the finer details are unknown exactly what happened, but we can guess as to what, uh, what happened, pretty much what happened. 
I mean, I'm pretty sure she it said she's something like she got tens of millions of dollars or whatever. So she, I think she asked for 80 million and I'm, I'm pretty sure she didn't get 80 million, but uh, she probably got something like that. But she was suing for a breach of contract and it was because, uh, you know, they did uh, day and date release and her contract didn't say that they could release it on Disney plus. It was just supposed to be for theaters only. I think it's better to settle, you know, um, because they didn't want to get uh, all that info out, you know, like numbers and all that stuff, how well, how well it really did on Disney Plus and everything. And the details are being kept secret now are apparently still working together, it says in the article, and that she will be still producing that Tower of Terror movie. Um, I don't know if she's going to start or not that hasn't been announced or anything like that. But I didn't think that she would ever work with that Disney and her would ever work again, let alone work in Hollywood, because, you know, she had kind of stained her name by being like, I'm going to sue everybody that I make a movie with. And it's like, I don't want to work with you if you're going to sue me after we make a movie together because you didn't like something. But uh, you can't expect uh, a day and date release to be in people's contracts now. I'm pretty sure that that's what it will say. We'll be like, we will reserve the right to put this on Disney Plus uh, if we so choose to. And you're going to sign away at that. And I think that it was, I think that they wanted to settle this lawsuit because they do have those other lawsuits. I just uh, did a video last week on that. You can check that out in the art card section if you want to. Um, but so they're just going to, they've got their hands full with lawsuits. And I'm pretty sure they were just like, listen, we do not want to keep going with this and everything. And I'm sure um, Disney got pressured a little bit, probably from other studios too. They're just like, hey, you know, you're, you know, uh, you're, this is an issue. We don't want this to keep going because we, they didn't want Scarlett Johansson to probably win because then it would set a precedent, you know, and then they would have to deal with that. Now, I think they should have done it like Warner Brothers did where they paid off all their talent. And I think, it, in fact, uh, it mentions it or whatnot. And I'm curious as to why they didn't mention or why they didn't pay off uh, their talent. You know, Warner Brothers paid off. I, I think they had 200 million that they divvied up between all their talent in movies and stuff. Um, and, you know, people like Gal Gadot and Denzel Washington and Patty Jenkins, they all got their bonuses because, you know, in, in Hollywood, if your movie reaches a certain level of sale, they you get a bonus and so they paid out those bonuses so they could put them on hbo max and they wouldn't get sued and i'm curious as to why disney i mean bob chapek is known for being cheap so maybe he did it because of that you know he's just been known for being cheap but i just don't understand why uh they wouldn't try to do that or whatnot. And we have to be honest, listen, Black Widow was not that great, in my opinion. I, I mean, it was it was fine, but it was just very meh for me. But so I don't I don't think it was going to do that good in theaters, let, uh, let alone. So I mean, like maybe this was better that they did a day and date release and Scarlett Johansson just can't get over her ego. Um, I don't know. And, and maybe she just wanted the money and maybe they should just pay her out right from the get go. Be like. Uh, how much you want 80 million how about this we'll give you 40 million okay that's that's all you're getting okay but they settled now they settled now i would everything so that is my second story of the week a third story of the week Ian Bowen has been cast in season two of Superman and Lois. Now, he will be playing Lieutenant Mitch Anderson, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> um, if you don't know Ian Bowen, he was on the show Teen Wolf, uh, which is also where Tyler Hockland uh, was on that show. So I'm pretty sure that's how they know each other, which is which is always good uh, and everything. Um, he's uh, also been a series regular on the show Yellowstone where he uh, plays opposite Kevin Costner. And he's also been in the Sicario sequel, Day of uh, Soldado. I don't know how that's how you say it. Anyways. So who is Mr. Anderson? Mr. Anderson. I'm going to say that every time they say Anderson, it's going to be so good. Um, I'm thinking maybe he'll be the head of the uh, DOD. Um, be just because, you know, uh, General Lane, he gave that up so he could be with his family and everything. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious to see, see how the dynamic works there. Now, as far as his character goes, they have said uh, that he's the metaphorical new sheriff in town at the DOD. And his worldview divides into two types, those you serve and those who serve you. And he doesn't like that Superman exists outside that paradigm and tries to bring the Man of Steel under his authority, authority, officially. 
Um, and I think, like I said before, I think that he's, and that's why I think he's going to be the new head of the DOD, uh, because he wants Superman to fall in line and uh superman doesn't have to because he's got powers um and i think it'll be interesting uh you know this guy he looks good uh and everything but uh we'll see how that plays out i'm very interested in season two i love this show you can check out all of uh, my stuff over here in the icard section uh you know because i cover that show weekly uh when it's on and i think that show is fantastic so i mean ian bowen uh, is a good I maybe he's a good uh, match and everything maybe he's a, a good addition to the show so those are my three stories tell me what do you guys think about all of this uh, how do you feel about Babylon 5 getting a reboot did you watch the show I think this sounds good just because uh, the original creator I'm not gonna try to say his name again uh, is coming back to write for the show so I think that that's a positive thing I always think that when you get the original creators of something back on board uh, that's always a good thing and it shows a positive light um, and I and I love this show. It's so good. I hope that they keep the looks of the characters, maybe change it up a tiny bit, but not too much just because I really I loved the way the old show looked. I love the feel of it. It just was so good. And I really hope I hope it doesn't go woke because that will just ruin it. It will real ruin it. There's no point in that. Uh, how do you feel about Scarlett Johansson and Disney settling? You know, Disney having to get a fork over that money to her. Do you think uh, this is good? Do you like this? You know, are you happy with this uh, this whole thing? Or do you wish that they would have battled it out and had their day in court? Uh, yeah, leave that down below. And then how do you feel about Ian Bowen being cast uh, in a role as Lieutenant Mitch Anderson uh, in season two of Superman and Lois? I mean, are this a good thing? Do you think like me, he's not just a uh, regular Joe, he's going to be the new head of the DOD? Or do you think he's just going to be somebody at the DOD instead of, you know, the head of it taking over for General Lane? Um, and then how do you feel about it? I never watched Teen Wolf. I've never seen anything. Well, I mean, I saw Sicario, but I haven't seen this Yellowstone, but the second Sicario, but I don't remember him. Uh, I didn't see uh, Yellowstone or Teen Wolf. So I don't know this actor uh, and his work uh, and everything. So um, we'll see how he works out. I'm, I can't wait to see it. So tell me, what do you guys think about all this? Uh, you know, go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go and hit that like button. You know, I won't mind. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. Check out my merch store. Um, and I will see you guys next week on my weekend review. You guys have a good week. Bye. Hey nerds, if you like this video, go ahead and click that Geek What icon and subscribe. And if you like this video, go ahead and join me every Sunday with my weekend review.